time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. Now, a lot of you guys have been sending me messages for a long time asking me to 3D print a cell phone case. Now, I'll be honest, early on, I did try to 3D print a couple of cell phone cases for my iPhone, and I wouldn't call them failures, but they weren't that successful. I used PLA plastic, which is a very, very rigid plastic, and it was hard to get the phone in and out of the case when I printed it, or I would have problems with fitment and the phone would move around and slide around inside of the case. It just wasn't ideal. Well, recently, I was sent a material sample called Ninja Flex. As you can see right here, I'm holding the filament in my hand. I can stretch it. I can pull it with a lot of force. I wish I had a force meter to show you guys how much, but this stuff is incredibly durable and elastic. Look, it always goes back to its original shape. Like even when you stretch it super hard, uh, it goes back to its original shape. This is amazing. I didn't even think a material like this was possible. If you tried to ball up a strand of PLA like that, it would just shatter. Now, unfortunately, I needed to find a case that was designed for flexible filament, and I was able to find that case on Thingiverse. Unfortunately, they didn't have one for my OnePlus One. Aww. But they did have a case for the iPhone 5S. Big surprise there. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and print out my first cell phone case in this rubber-like NinjaFlex material and slap it on the phone and see how it performs. And before you guys start asking in the comments, I'm not gonna 3D print a condom, okay? It, it's not gonna happen, yet. All right guys, so here's the case right here. It's created by Maker Seth, and it's the iPhone 5 slash 5S case for flexible filament. Flexible filament is important because if you try to print this in plastic, you're never gonna get your phone into it. Now, if you haven't used Thingiverse before, you pretty much just log in, click download this thing, and then it shows all the files that are in there. We just want to get this one right here. This is the original. And it looks like he also did an update, Rev1 STL. We're just going to be using the original. All right, so now we have Cura 14.09 open. We're going to go ahead and drag the flexible case over and drop it. Now you can see it loads up, has all the holes. Everything looks right. The scale's perfect. It, it's just ready to go. But... If you try to print it right now with the default 50 millimeter a second print speed, it says two hours, 40 minutes, which you're gonna end up with is like one or two layers of goop. It's just not gonna work if you have a Bowden drive printer like the Ultimaker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and drop it down to 15 millimeters a second. Now that is a snail's pace and it's gonna increase the print time to three hours and 58 minutes. And the other thing is we're gonna stick with a 0.2 layer height because there's no reason for us to have a really fine layer height on this because of the detail. And plus Ninja Flex prints better when you use a little bit thicker layers. We're gonna go ahead and set the fill density at 100% because we want the thing to be completely solid rubber and as durable as possible. So that added more to the print time. Now we're at the four hours and 13 minutes. And now the one that's gonna really slow it down is we're gonna click on the advanced tab and we're gonna go to infill speed and set that to 15 also. And now we have a case that's gonna take roughly seven hours to print, which still isn't, you know, all that bad, but just don't expect to be a speed demon using this filament. Even if you have a direct drive printer, you're still not gonna to wanna to use high speeds just because of how compressible the material is. All right, we're gonna check our layer view. Everything looks pretty good. The only overhangs we have are down here, but they're so close together, I don't think we'll need any support material. All right, time to take it over to the printer. All right, guys, so here we have the final 3D print. And you can see on the back, it's super glossy, almost like a mirror. But look how flexible this is. I can literally ball that entire case up in my hand, let it go, and it goes back exactly to its original shape. Look at that. I honestly never thought they would be able to make a 3D material 
that's this flexible. Now, of course, the downside was if you watched during the print, it was a very, very slow print operation because I had to print at 15 millimeters a second, which is a snail's pace. Usually I print at 50 to 100 millimeters a second. Now, the reason why I had to do that was on the Ultimaker 3D printer, it has something called a Bowden tube system. It feeds the material through a tube up and over into the print head. And basically it has to compress the material against the print head. Well, since this is such an elastic material, you have a problem because if you go too fast, it just mashes the material up and it doesn't extrude in a controlled way. So you do have to go pretty slow unless you have a direct drive printer, say like a Robo 3D, in which case then you can print much faster. But you're still not gonna wanna print this material at full speed just because of its elastic properties. Now, another thing to notice was too, I did have to do some cleanup down here on the bottom and cut out some of the little spider webs and stuff because this material is very, very gooey. And I played around with some temperature settings and everything like that, but I still got a little bit of stringing. And if you look, I do have some places where you can see some of the lines didn't feed quite right. There is a cross hatching pattern, but overall the print actually did turn out well for my first attempt, but it is a finicky material and a little bit tricky to work with. So just play with the settings and you'll get it right. But the real moment of truth is how how well does the phone fit? So we just took the model off Thingiverse that you saw earlier, printed this out to scale, no modifications, and now we're gonna take this iPhone 5S and stick it in there. Now the nice thing is, because it is a rubber case, it flexes around the lip, and you can see right there, there is zero slack, works absolutely perfectly, and you see they got little bumps out here for the volume, I can turn the volume up and down so those little bumps on the case actually do push and work, and the power button does actually wish to turn it on and off. Now, if this was a plastic case, you wouldn't be able to have those buttons because if you'd push on them, it would just exert force on all the buttons, not just the individual ones. So this rubber-like material is perfect for printing cell phone cases and it has the consistency of a Super Bowl. It even protects the front of your screen all the way around here. Now, if you guys want to 3D print your own case for flexible filament and you actually have this filament, look at the link in the video description. I show you the Thingiverse model to download and print and the material comes in an array of colors. I happen to have it in gray and I also have an orange material that I'm gonna to try to print next. I'm waiting for a one plus one case. Once they get a case for this bad boy, that's what I'm gonna print. And also I will be getting an iPhone six soon also. I'm sorry, I love the one plus one guys, I really do, but the camera on it, just as giving me too low a quality pictures for what I'm used to shooting. So I need that iPhone quality camera. And I also need an Instagram app that works. And Instagram just sucks on Android and they refuse to fix the damn thing. So unfortunately I'm gonna be forced to go back to iOS, but I still wanna put a case on my OnePlus One. So once that's available, I'm gonna do it. Now, another really nice thing is the case comes off just as easy as it went on. Look at this, you just grab it from any angle and just peel it off. And that's all there is to it. You can see the case, like I said, is incredibly flexible. You're not going to break it. You can even take it and wring it. Look at that. And it returns back to its original shape. Isn't that nuts? So I'd have to say the thing that impressed me the most about this material is just how durable it is. I'm confident you could print like a sole of a shoe or a wearable part. Um, out of this material. Cause like you saw, I was trying to stretch a single strand of filament and I was having a hard time getting it to break. So they've done an amazing job on that. So I will be doing some future prints in Ninja Flex. If you guys have ideas of stuff you want me to see printed in this material, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Well guys, I have to say overall, I am incredibly impressed with the material. The first thing that I printed, which was a case, I had one failure because the first time that I tried to print with the material, I tried to go at too high of speed. I tried to go at 25 to 30 millimeters a second playing with it. And I ended up with a problem where it just wasn't feeding fast enough and it was basically leaving me with something that was kind of partially printed as you can see right here. But once I got the kinks worked out and I got the temperature and the speed just right, it printed it out with no problems. And I think with a little more tweaking, I can even greatly improve upon this. All right, another concern that I have with this material is printing a small thing like a phone case worked absolutely fantastic. And I think printing something that's small like this will be okay. But if you print something that's really, really large, I suspect that you may have some problems with it drooping, um, depending on the density of the material and how thin certain parts of it are. So just be conscious that because the material is flexible and it is rubber-like, that you're gonna wanna put supports in strategic places and be patient and print at a very slow speed to get a good result. But the end result is totally worth it, guys. This is very, very durable material. And to be honest, I feel like the phone's completely protected. I mean, this is my iPhone 5S right here.
Drop test. Look at that, it still works. It's actually a great case design too. Even though it's very generic looking, it has all the punch outs in the right spot, exposes the speakers on the bottom, place to plug in your cables. I mean, it is a good design. Now, if you guys wanna try out your own Ninja Flex material, I'll have links down in the video description. And it basically comes on a 0.75 kilogram roll, just like this one. It's actually quite full. And as long as you take your time, you're patient, and you print at a very slow speed, 10 to 15 millimeters a second, and you play with your temperature and get it just right, you will get good results. And it's worth waiting for the print because what you get is something unlike any other material I've used. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed my video reviewing the Ninja Flex material and printing my first item which protects my iPhone 5. And if you guys wanna see me print other things in the Ninja Flex material, just let me know down in the comments. Also come over and follow me, I'm at Barnacles on Twitter. That's where I do most of my social networking. So if you wanna get a response from me, that's usually the fastest way to do it. Well guys, if you made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed yourself, go ahead and hashtag Ninja Flex for the win, because Barnacle says so. Now also, if you guys are looking to buy a 3D printer like the one I use, I have a link in the video description. Go and check it out. These are awesome 3D printers. All right guys, until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter, I'm at Barnacle. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.